What up fam? Today I'm going to talk to you guys about why I believe shoes are designed on the market today that involve carbon fiber plates and certain foams. If you guys haven't done so already, please consider hitting that subscribe button, smashing that like button, and giving me a follow on social media. Links will be down in the description below. Today we're going to talk about the shoe in both the marketing perspective and a design perspective. Marketing the sense of the development of foams over the years and how they maybe have died off in sales to hype up another product and design to show that the shoe design this way will lead to greater performance, a greater propulsion of a runner and a decrease in times overall. From a marketing perspective, we're talking about a Nike shoe here. Let's talk about foams. If you guys remember, comment down below if you do. You had, or if I'm wrong, comment down below, Lunarlon, Cushlon, React Foam, and then Zoom X Foam. Now over time, and I'm sure their analytics, they keep track of any company does, when things start to fade in sales, they wanna come up with a new hyper product. So right now on the market, Zoom X is the way to go. Other known as PBAX Foam. It's also in the Softy Endorphin Pro. It's in Nike's Next Percent, Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent. I believe it's also in the Reebok Float Ride, right? But there's only two known super shoes on the market right now, and that has to do with how they're molded together with a medium, such as a carbon fiber plate, an ion plate, a TPU shank, and a foam. And those two shoes on the market currently are the Saki Endorphin Pro and the Nike Next Percent Series, which includes the Alpha Fly as well. It is believed that with a shoe, you can't just have foam by itself because when a runner runs, it's believed that the foam has absorbed enough of the energy to return to the runner, but not enough of the energy to propel the runner forward. So like I said prior, you need a certain medium in the shoe. If you guys pay attention to the design of shoes, right? The shorter event an event is, the stiffer a shoe is, the longer event is, the less stiff a shoe is, right? The plantar fascia is the primary shock absorber of your body. It is responsible for, with the active dorsiflexion of those metatarsal phalangeal joints, to load that plantar fascia to store potential energy to help propel that runner forward. If you have a shoe that's really stiff, what's gonna happen is that you're not gonna have the ability to dorsiflex those toes to help load that plantar fascia naturally because that's the way your body's designed to help propel that runner forward. Now there is an advantage to wanting to have a stiff shoe versus an unstiff shoe. The stiffer a shoe is, let's look at the Nike Outfly Next Percent. Those out there that have tried the Nike Outfly Next Percent, comment down below if you ever tried sprinting in them or accelerating in them, trying to get faster, it's very hard to do and that is because the shoe is too stiff. Basically, the technology, the bottom of the shoe, a lot of these technologies, the more stiff it is, the way it's made, takes place of your plantar fascia. Therefore, you can't directly load your plantar fascia. Therefore, you can't dorsiflex your toes. Therefore, you can't propel forward as much. The stiffness of a shoe tends to be best in an event that involves steady state running, such as the marathon or the half marathon. Now, we can get down and talk about sprinting, but a sprinting event is usually short enough then use blocks to offset that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The Nike Alpha Fly is designed specifically for the marathon, in my opinion, for that reason. Now, if you paid attention to the design of the Alpha Fly, they state on the website, on the Nike website, that the larger the shoe is, the more stiff the carbon fiber plate is, and the smaller the shoe is, the less stiff a carbon fiber plate is. Now, I bet you that when they, pro professional runners from any company are allowed to wear a prototype, you have to understand that the design of the carbon fiber plate and the technology in the shoe has to be made specifically to that runner, to how they load, to the to their anatomical design specifics, right? So let's take a little example like Elliot Kipchoge's sub two hour shoe. A lot of marketing out there, especially on Instagram, you got people posting, oh, the Nike Outfly Next Percent, the current one in the market, which only has one carbon fiber plate versus the one versus Elliot Kipchoge wore, which had three carbon fiber plates. And I also bet you that the uh, tension in the plates themselves were designed specifically for the body type of Elliot Kipchoge. From a design perspective and from a marketing perspective, the only way they could have done that to make it benefit the runner of the general consumer would be able to change the, the stiffness of the carbon fiber plate because probably there is a direct correlation to um, the size and weight of an individual and how stiff a carbon fiber plate B is in order to make sales. So that's why the, and I believe that the Alpha Fly has the design of the carbon fiber plate it is in terms of stiffness. So when it comes to sprinting, as you guys have noticed, most sprint spikes tend to be really stiff and they're stiff for a reason. Like I said, if it's a, state, if it's a steady state, even if it's a short event, I'm not a sprinter, comment down below if you are. The dry phase of sprinting, what, you're up at your peak speed at what, 25 to 50% of like say 100 meter dash, right? So you drive through the first 20, 25 meters, but they need those blocks because Shoes, the sprint spikes are so stiff they can't get proper load, but you need those blocks to offset the fact that, you know, the lower part of your body 
uh, the plantar fascia, the Achilles tendon is taking less of the stress uh, going forward. Basically, if you guys ever wore the Alpha Fly, your lower part of your legs are pretty much inept. You're pretty much using, you know, your glutes, your, your quads, and your hammies when you're running with such a stiff shoe. The way I believe shoes should be designed in the future is that we need a shoe that has four foot stiffness that's not too stiff, and but can still has the ability to be stiff once you're at the steady state, you know, range of a race. And the closest thing I believe in the market right now is the Adi Zero Pro that just came out by Adidas because even though there is carbon fiber in the shoe, they have the forefoot, the way that, you know, the carbon fiber rods are designed, because of the fact that it's less area, they'd be able to bend more, so there's less stiffness. So you're still getting propulsion, but less stiffness in the shoe. So I bet you acceleration in that shoe may be better than Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent. But I also believe that the Alpha Fly Next Percent might outperform the Adidas Euro Pro in the marathon for the fact that the Alpha Fly is more stiff on the technology in the bottom of the shoe. So that is why I believe how carbon fiber shoes are designed today on the market. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell when I post my next video. If you guys got any questions or any uh, ideas on the topic of the subject, use that comment section down below. I'll catch you guys next time.